What's up guys, Sean the Bro here, and today we're going to be going over part 3 of Lock On of Objects and Enemies. So this will be the last main part that we have, as it's going to cover the last main mechanics for the Lock On. And so what we'll be covering today is a maximum distance, so if we go above that distance, if we go too far away from the opponent, the Lock On will actually break, and we will no longer be locked on to anybody. So we can have a maximum distance that the object and the character can be away from each other. We're going to be going over targeting the closest actor, not just the first one in the array of potential actors. So you'll see that I can overlap with this one. This one on my left is within range to be locked onto. And so is this one on my right now. Since the one on the right is closer, if I hit lock on, I'm going to lock on to that one. But when I switch, I can still switch to the other one. Now, if I am to disengage, walk a little bit closer to the one on my left here, or really right in front of me now, you can see I lock onto them first, and then when I switch targets, I go to the other one. We're also going to make it to where, when we are locked on, we can always face our opponent. Now, right now, it's a little jittery in the actual animation, and this is actually tied to the looking around with the mouse and how that is locking the character mesh from rotating. However, despite the little jitter of the animation, you can see it's working because normally if I press back and start walking toward the camera, the character rotates and starts walking that direction. If I'm locked onto my character and I press back, I'm just backing away from the opponent as opposed to turning. So I'm always facing my opponent and when the lock on stops, I go back to normal. Before we get started, I just want to give a huge shout out to my YouTube membership and Patreon members and supporters. Thank you guys for all you do, for all the love and support. I'm really grateful. I'm really glad you guys are enjoying the series as much as I am. It is incredibly fun to work on. If you'd like to get caught up in the series before you watch today's episode, I'll go ahead and link you to the entire playlist of the third person action RPG tutorial series right here. You can check out everything we've done to get to this point. We still have a really long way to go, but we've made a lot of great progress from the beginning, so feel free to check that out and get caught up. Alternatively, if you don't care about that, you may care about the previous episodes for the lock-on. So if you do, if you want to just get caught up on the lock-on system and check out everything we've done for this little mechanic, I'll link you to the first episode of lock-on right here, so you can check out all the logic we've done and fully implement that into your game. With all that out of the way, we can go ahead and get started on today's episode. So everything is going to be done in code today. So we can go to our code, specifically go to our third person tutorial character H. We can scroll down to where we make our variables and we're gonna to wanna to go to the floats. And what I've done is made a maximum distance that enemies or objects can be away from the character and remain targeted. I've called this max targeting distance. It is a float and I made it U property so that we can edit it or view it in the blueprint. Actually, I'm gonna change this category really quickly because I did not realize I copied that. That's my fault, but here we go. Now, once we have this max targeting distance variable in here, we can determine how far we, we can potentially stay locked onto a target. So, if we go to our first person tutorial character.cpp in the constructor here where we set all of our variables, we can set this variable as well. And I've given it a default value of 2000. I'll show you how this actually affects it and how far 2000 is when we're in the game. You could always increase this value based on skills or leveling up if you'd like to lock on to opponents farther away. So when you're using projectile weapons, you have more accuracy. You have a lot of freedom with it, but for now, we're actually just going to set it this one time, have it be a default value, and we'll see how far we can go with it and what values we like when we're actually playing the game, how far we think is a good enough distance to be locked onto. Now, if we scroll down, we can go to our toggle lock on function. Toggle lock on is where we enable and disable locking on. We just do different logic based on what we already are. In toggle lock on, we had this if check to determine if we were already locked on. If we were, we were disabling everything related to lock on. Else, we were enabling everything related to lock on. So within the first if statement, if is locked on, we had everything highlighted already in this little branch of logic. 
So there's only one line that we're adding, and that is a variable called b use controller rotation yaw. So use controller rotation yaw is part of the pawn class. And what this allows us to do is ignore rotation by the controller. So for example, when I was pressing back toward the camera and the character was rotating toward that movement so that they were facing the camera, in the case of disabling lock on, we want to go back to normal. We want to be able to rotate freely and in the direction we're moving. Instead of backing up, if we hold backward, we're going to turn around and face backward and walk that direction. Now, the alternative is that we are not already locked on when this function is called, meaning that we are going to begin locking on. In the else here, we had an if statement where we we're determining if there were candidates that we could lock on to. If there were, we were picking the first candidate because we wanted to make sure that we locked on to somebody. Even though there's multiple, we have to pick one. However, this was just working off of whoever was first in this candidates array. So lock on candidates is just a bunch of actors. It's an actor array so that we could determine what objects or enemies we can lock on to. And we were just using index zero here to determine what actor we were going to start locked on to. But now I want to lock on to the closest actor first. And then when we swap between them, we can change which actor it is that we're locked on to. But this way, we'll go to the, the nearest threat or the closest object, which is what we're going to assume the player was trying to lock on to when they were pressing the button. It might not always be the case, but I think it's going to be a lot closer than just picking an arbitrary actor in the list. So now I've commented out this line. This was previously the line that we had in here to set locked on actor. And instead I've added all of this logic here. After we can make sure that there's at least one candidate to lock on to, we can set that and assume that that is the closest actor for now. But what we're really going to want to do is loop through all the actors that are candidates to lock on to, determine which one is closest out of them, and then set that to be our current locked on actor. To do this, I've made an actor pointer and I've called it closest actor, and I've defaulted that to null pointer. From there, I set closest actor to be locked on candidates index zero. So this is basically what we were doing here where we were setting the locked on actor to be index zero. But closest actor is not what we're going to be targeting. We're going to be still targeting locked on actor. So closest actor is just a local variable that's gonna keep track of the actor that's closest to us when we begin the lock on. So once we've set this, we can now compare this value to every other candidate that we can lock on to. And we can do that using a for loop. This is a standard for loop. Integer i equals zero, i is less than lock on candidates dot num plus plus i. In this if statement, we're going to determine if the distance from the current actor to the actor we're checking against is less than the distance of the closest actor. We know this is now a closer actor. Right, getting the distance. If a distance is greater, it's farther away. So if it's less, then it's closer. So we call get distance to, which this is just a regular function we can call on any actor, and pass it. You have to pass an actor. We're going to pass it lock on candidates at index i. Now, if that is less than the distance of the current closest actor, we're going to go into this if statement and we're going to set the closest actor to be this lock on candidates. We're just updating the closest actor since we found an actor that was closer that we can lock on to. Else we don't do anything. If it's farther away, well, we don't need to reset closest actor so we can just go to the next element in the list. Now, important to note that technically by leaving this at i equals zero and we're starting the closest actor on index i, we never really need to do this at index zero. So you could actually make this index one and start at the first index. Now this would only be valid if lock on candidates had more than one element in it. If not, what's gonna happen is we're gonna go into this for loop. It's gonna say i equals one. i is gonna be equal to the lock on candidates that num since there's only one candidate. And thus it won't ever go into this for loop this will just avoid an extra check for distances here. Basically, since the closest actor is already index zero by default, we don't need to check against it. Just realized that while I was recording this episode, that'll just be a little bit better for performance, but it won't hurt anything either way. 
And now we're going to set locked on actor to closest actor once this for loop is completed. Whatever closest actor has, this should be the closest actor that we have the ability to lock onto, and thus we can just set that. I'm going to get rid of my old logic here that I had to set locked on actor. And now my function is going to look like this. Also, down at the bottom, in the if locked on actor, we were setting is locked on is true. So basically, if we had an actor to lock on to, we are locked on. It's two things that we should do while we're in here. Technically, this here, this toggle lock on effect should be within this if statement. Hasn't caused any problems, but it was just bugging me that it wasn't because it should be in there. We want to only enable the lock on effects if we do actually have an actor that we're locked on to. And also... We now want to do what we did the opposite of in the if statement above. We want to use control rotation yaw and set that to be true. If we're locked on, we're in that view where we are focusing on what the controller is pointed at looking at. The mesh is not rotating. It's not changing direction based off input. It is just looking at the character. We're locked on to them. As we back up, we're still going to be facing them. Now see how I can get this smooth effect when backing up as opposed to that jitter. That is because after we disabled the rotation of the pawn when locking on, we also have to disable the character movements want to rotate. So they're trying to rotate different ways based on where they should move, based on the inputs they're given, based on momentum that they have. So if they have a turn rate and they're turning a certain rate, they're trying to rotate based on where the camera is. There's a lot going on here that is different between the two and they're trying to rotate different directions. So now that you can see that working, we're gonna go ahead and fix that up as well. So while in this function, haven't left toggle lock on yet, we're gonna add another line here to where we had the use control rotation yaw equals false. That's true, we wanna leave that, but we also want to call this function here. So when we are disabling lock on, we wanna set orient rotation to movement equals true. This is going to allow our character to go back to default like usual when exiting lock on. So they'll be able to rotate as they want to depending on the direction that they're moving. It's that simple. However, the really important one here is when we were enabling lock on here and we were setting use control rotation yaw to true, we wanna make sure we disable the orientation rotation to movement. Right? We don't want to orient the rotation of movement because if we do, it's going to try to be, when we're backing up, it's trying to rotate. And then it's being overwritten and saying, nope, don't use this controller rotation, y'all. But it's getting all, this, all these values coming in saying, you should rotate, you should turn this way. So the character movement is the one that's fixing the animation part of it, that jitter. And the Boolean to use the controller rotation, y'all, is what's stopping the actual rotation so make sure you have them both in the toggle lock on function set accordingly, depending on if you're disabling the lock on or enabling it. Another thing we want to go to is the tick function in the code. And this is where we're going to set up the maximum targeting distance to actually do what we'd expect. So essentially, once we've reached the maximum distance or we've surpassed that maximum distance, we want to now disable the lock on. This is everything we had within this if statement. So this if statement had these three lines and nothing else. You can see now I've added a little bit of extra logic. So essentially, we only want to do this logic if the distance from this character to the locked on actor is less than or equal to the maximum targeting distance. Else, we're going to toggle lock on again because this will then disable the lock on. Again, we're going to do get distance to and we're going to pass it locked on actor this time. We want to make sure it's less than or equal to our max targeting distance. And if it is, we can then do all the standard targeting logic. Else, if it's not, we call toggle lock on, which since we are locked on, we'll be disabling the lock on. So then we will go about our normal lives. And once we do that, we can come in and test all of these things out. Again, you should be able to target the closest actor and still swap between other actors. Next, I should be able to back away when targeting an actor. And once I reach my maximum distance, you'll see that the lock on symbol breaks and I can no longer lock onto them. 
so I don't have to press anything to disable lock on. And I actually can't get far enough away here. Let's see if I walk over to this side, you can see that the lock on breaks right around the corner area here. And now if we edit our maximum targeting distance on our base character, So we have a max targeting distance of 2,000. Let's say we make it 1,000. Now when I lock on to my opponent, whoops, that was my inventory. When I lock on to my opponent, if I am to back up, you see it snaps off a lot sooner. I can't go nearly as far without it breaking the lock on, lock, breaking the targeting. So there we go, guys. That is improved locking on within our third person and action RPG tutorial series. This is functioning exactly how I would expect, how I would want it to. We can do all sorts of different things with this lock on. It does actually help us attack as well since it does make us face the opponent. So if I'm circling my opponent and I'm throwing punches in the middle like this, you see I can actually hit him without having to do a bunch of difficult aiming. I'm just already locked on. Anyway, guys, that's all I got for you today, so thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and if you did, please subscribe. It does more for myself in the series than anything else you can do, and I just really appreciate it. I want to give a huge shout-out again to my YouTube membership and Patreon members and supporters. Thank you guys for all the love and support. Thank you for everything you do. I am so incredibly happy to be working on this series, and I am so grateful that you guys are enjoying it and showing me the progress that you're making on your games. It is so fun to do. If you had any issues with this tutorial or any of my tutorials, feel free to join the Discord community. I'd be happy to assist you. It's completely free. There's a link in the description. Like I said, guys, that's all I got. So thank you so much for watching. I'm Sean the Bro, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye, guys.